Back live inside the Alexander Memorial Coliseum and for the starting lineup, let's check in with our PA announcer, John Pendergast. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Alexander Memorial Coliseum on the campus of Georgia Tech. And welcome to the 15th annual McDonald's All-American High School Basketball Game. Here are your starting lineup. First for the West. At guard, number 23, Richard Keene. At the other guard, number 32, Jason Kidd. At center, number 24, Othella Harrington. At forward, number 51, Charles Macon. And at forward, number 34, Corliss Williamson. And now for the East. At guard, number 10, Dwayne Simpkin. At the other guard, number 33, Dante Bright. At center, number 22, Carlos Strong. At forward, number three, Roderick Rhodes. And at the other forward, number 23, Martise Moore. The head coaches for the West squad, Willie Boston. And for the East, Wendell Bird. We've got an all-star helping us out today on the McDonald's All-American Basketball Game. Let's check in with Greg Gumbel. JB, you are much too kind. Hello, everyone. Uh, one of the young men you'll see in action today, uh, perhaps the most highly sought-after recruit in the country, Jason Kidd, who will attend the University of California. The winner of the Jason Kidd sweepstakes, head coach uh, Lou Campanelli, is here. What will the folks see out of Jason Kidd today, and what is it about him that, that makes him such a terrific prospect? Extremely unselfish. Gives up the ball in the open court, as well as any player I've seen in recent years. Great court vision, excellent defensive instincts. You aren't looking forward to having him, are you? I can't wait. <laughs> Lou, thank you very much. JB? All right, Greg, thank you very much. And the officials for today's contest, all from the ACC, Dick Paparo, Syracuse, New York, Mike Wood from Spartanburg, South Carolina, and Zelton Speed out of Charlotte, North Carolina. And we're underway, Billy, and it's controlled by the West All-Star. And this is Jason Kidd, the young man Greg Gumbel just got finished talking about with Lou Campanelli. Off the mark, the rebound by Corliss Williamson can get the drop. And Martise Moore with the rebound. Plays extremely tall. We're going to see Martise go up there. He's a swing man at six foot seven. Plays bigger than that. Really is going to help Bobby Crimmins here at Georgia Tech. Philly, much like the game last year, a lot of feeling out amongst the players in the early going. I guess adrenaline is so so high, we're going to see a little bit of a fast pace early on. Well, we will, and you have to remember, these fellas only scrimmage for about 15 minutes against each other, so could be a little sloppy early on, but this club uh, handles the ball extremely well, so I expect the pass to be maybe a little better than it was last year. Nice pass pass. by Kidd, as Harrington is fouled, Othella Harrington is fouled as he attempts the shot. Well, as Luke Campanelli said, Jason Kidd is one of the best passes we'll see come into college basketball in quite some time. He is not as quick as, let's say, a Kenny Anderson, who we saw a few years ago that played right here at Georgia Tech. But I think on the break, we saw him in that scrimmage yesterday, J.B., make some passes that I have not seen in college basketball, maybe ever. I think he's that good a passer on the break. He is superb. At the free throw line is Othella Harrington. Six, nine and a half, 220 pounds out of Jackson, Mississippi from Murrah High School, the only undecided player here in, in the game in terms of where he's heading to school next year. And the guys behind us, principally Division I coaches, are really nervous about that. Even those that are not going to get him, hoping, hey, don't let him come in our league. Not at all. Not at all. Charles Macon is fouled on that attempted shot. He'll be at the free throw line. Dante Bright out of Dunbar, Baltimore, battle with the first personal foul. Charles Macon. Go ahead, Billy. Well, he was uh, Mr. Basketball in the state of Indiana. We had almost every kid out here representing a state, and obviously some from multiple states, were the player of the year in their respective state. In the case of Macon, of course, he was in Indiana. 6'8", 231 pounds. He's heading to Ohio State next year. And Randy Ayers has got a couple of kids 
playing in this game, the other being Greg Simpson out of Lima, Ohio. You will see him certainly as well. Uh, Charles visited Ohio State the weekend of the Ohio State-Indiana game that we did on CBS earlier this year, which Indiana won. But obviously, he wasn't uh, changing any decisions there. Dante Bright, nice move, can't get the drop. Rebounded by Osella Harrington. A good example of what I talked about, the swing players in this particular game. Richard Keen, three-point land. Rebounded by Corliss Williamson, and Williamson is hat. Take your pick, Dante Bright or Roger Rose. And Williamson, of course, one of the great players ever to come out of the state of Arkansas. And here, J.B., as you said before, pretty spread out compared to last year where Michigan got four players out of this game, which was unprecedented. Arkansas with two. Chance for one more possibly coming out of this game in the undecided case. But uh, this young man in at about, what, 230, would you say? Mm -hmm. And can carry 230. Probably want to play at 225 or so, but very strong. Had a great AAU game against none other than Chris Weber, last year's National Player of the Year, who had 37. I'm sure Chris is watching his game. Probably saying, yeah, I wasn't on him the whole game. That was a head-to-head -head matchup. And Harrington with the rebound, and he is a rebounder supreme. His third rebound already. Average oh, me. Charles Macon from Jason Kidd. Anybody that was watching what I said up top, that this guy can pass the ball as well as anybody we've seen come into college basketball, is just getting the beginning of some of the examples. What's up, what's up? And Billy Cal Berkeley will have a nice squad as we take a look at Marquise Moore dropping in the jumper. He's headed for Georgia Tech. Always looking to make the play, and that has become contagious with the kids on his team. People realize how good a passer he is, and they want to show they can throw the ball as well. Marquise Moore with the swipe. This is Dwayne Simpkins out of Damascus for the three off the front of the iron. Good hustle by Simpkins. He gets it. Get back to Marquise Moore. And Williamson with the rebound. This is Jason Kidd, and he's fouled trying to split. Carlos Strong with the foul. Now watch him coming down. Looks one way, gives the other, stays in control, does not draw the charge. Perfect hit. Right to make him for the easy layup. He had been defended by Dwayne Simpkins, who's headed for the University of Maryland. Perfect bounce pass to the inside. A great pass by Dean. And Williamson showing that he's not afraid to go to the hoop in traffic, and he's fouled. So he is indeed a nice, strong-looking body, and you're right, Billy. He's probably going to lose about 10, 15 pounds playing for Nolan Richardson out there at Arkansas. Without question, the style of play. He is in a very aggressive kid, but you can just see the body on him. Much like James Forrest, who played in the game last year that went to Georgia Tech and had such an outstanding year. Uh, plays very similar to him. A strong rebounder inside, has range on his jump shot. Now you see 6'7", 235. And James Forrest, you mentioned, of course, a McDonald's All-American who played in this game last year, had the shot during the NCAA tournament. The knock George Raveling in Southern Cal out. Only three-pointer he made all year. Part of the break for the NCAA tournament. There's Williamson with another rebound. Another That's five or six for him. He's got five. Kid fakes the pass, but he traveled that time. He was looking He was looking for Keen to cut. Keen stayed on the outside, and it had him take it up and down. You know, the flashy moves of Jason Kidd really are just a natural part of his repertoire. You don't get the impression that he's trying to look flashy just for the sake of being flashy. I would agree. As a matter of fact, he's very much under control uh, with the pass. It's an 8-2 ball game. The West All-Stars on top. West in red and Dante Bright taking the ball to the hoop, and he's fouled. And the young man taking the trip to the free throw line. Attempting a three-point play as the basket was good out of Baltimore Dunbar High School, the national champs in high school basketball, a record of 29-0, and, oh, and he's headed for UMass. Going to UMass, of course, John Calipari here watching today. Dante is a lot stronger in, in his legs than I anticipated. You know, he doesn't look up top like he's a 200-pounder, but he's got a good set of legs on, a great flashing score. Good rebound by Rose. Jason Kidd, little subtle thing, getting in front of Dante Bright to keep him from getting to the ball, and it goes over to the West All-Stars. But Jason averaged seven steals a game. Now you say, now that, that's an illegitimate stat, but he gets his hands on so many balls defensively. Simpkins, two on three. Good move by Strong, misses the hoop, rebounded by Harrington. He's got four rebounds. This is Kidd. 
June. Kid with a nice circus move. And again, looking for the pass. Macon didn't cut, so he took it all the way himself. Special player. A 10-5, West Lee, 16-09. Left There's one of those steals. Nice pass to Harrington. Boy, do you have to keep your eyes on Jason Kidd as Harrington gets yeah. his first bucket of the afternoon. I said in the 15-minute scrimmage yesterday, he threw some passes we did not see in all of college basketball this year, and he's already making sure that I'm not lying on that statement. Dante Bright, one-on-one against Macon. Tough shot, not a good shot, not a good one. You won't see him do that too often. No. Oh, nice wow, a bad pass. pass. Billy, a 10-point bounce pass from Jason Kidd. Talk about some strong fingers. Oh, and, and there was a good defensive play. Simpkins uh, was able to hang on to it. And strong is fouled by Othella Harrington, a little too strong on the defense. First personal on Othella Harrington as Carlos Strong will take a trip to the free throw line, a 6'8", 231-pound forward out of Cedar Shoals High School in Athens, Georgia. Player of the year in the state of Georgia this year, staying right close to home, going up to play uh, at the University of Georgia. They had an excellent recruiting class uh, this year. The SEC, as we mentioned, uh, one of the conferences that really is going to reap some benefits off of this All-American team, as well as their recruiting uh, of kids that weren't quite that fortunate. Michael Lloyd coming in, replacing Dwayne Simpkins as well as Tony Delp coming in to replace Dante Bright. And we'll give you a bit more information on these young men. Right now, Carlos Strong. Billy, I guess looking at Carlos Strong, typical of the big bodies on these high school players coming up these days. Right, they, as I said, not many kids over 6 foot 10, but those under that have the good, powerful body. And Jason Kidd, a passer supreme, showing his tools a 12-7 West lead. Everybody knows he's a coach from Syracuse, but we came off the golf leaderboard, J.B., and you know what he has in common with golf? He wins every year. He and Tom Davis fight for it. The best golfer of all Division I coaches in America. Now, that's he's saying the, something. He's, now, he's the leaderboard man there. I guess practicing in a snow. Oh, great Syracuse. pass again to Keene. And Keene couldn't convert on a reverse layup attempt, but a nice pass by Jason Kidd. Everybody hitting ahead. Michael Lloyd, of course, hitting ahead beautifully. So far, Roderick Rhodes has not been able to get into the offensive thrust. Look out. Kid, nice pass over to Harrington, but he's going to be called for the charge. Now, that's one of the things, if you were defending against Jason Kidd, and I'm sure the Pac-10 scouts are looking at it already, you have got to get him, because he's going to try to penetrate with that dish, to draw a bunch of charges. He's going to have to learn to pull up, take that short jump, or something that Bobby Hurley, a former McDonald's All-American, learned midway through his sophomore year, made him so effective in his penetration. Roderick Rhodes handling the ball. Back to Marquise Moore. Tony Delk, the guard, along with Michael Lloyd. Good overplay by Keane. And Delk is a three now. This young man averaged 39 points a game in high school in Brownsville, Tennessee. And had a 70-point game and can do what he showed right there, which is shoot on the perimeter, going to the University of Kentucky, where everybody knows what they would like to do with that three-point shot. Rick Pacino is not bashful about letting these guys throw up the three. So he'll fit in nicely. That last basket by Kenyon Murray out of Iowa. And Lloyd short of the mark for the three-point attempt. Rebounded by Delft, the smallest player out there. I tell you, nobody gets in Harrington's way when he drafts off the rebound. Kid, nice pass. Murray. This is Tony Duff, the young man you heard Billy Minton scored 70 points in a high school game. Oh, strong with, with a strong move. Carlos Strong. Strong headed for the University of Georgia. 24 points a game, 9 rebounds. Went right into Harrington. and They, they battled each other, and you watch some NBA-type banging down inside with Harrington playing against him. This is Harrington. Pump takes it and gets the drop. We've got a tight ball game now, 16-12. West on top with 13-33 left in the first half as third Licker, a 7-foot 3-inch player out of Harker Prep coming in. We're going to see Strong taking the ball right to the basket, giving up his body and making sure he kept that head up for the layup. He's going to sit down, take a little breath. Licker comes in, and he'll be going now against Harrington. Licker at 7-3 with the pass right now, blocked by Corliss Williamson and stolen by Jason Kidd. He's looking for somebody to come up. Boy, does he keep track of where yep. everyone is on the floor? Now to Michael Lloyd, two on one. 
and Lloyd, a strongly built 6'2 guard who's headed to Arkansas. And he's going to love that system, too. Richard Keane, nice pass on the inside to Harrington. And Harrington blocked partially by Zwicker and John Wallace, too. He's a man that uh, plays a lot bigger than he's listed. He's going to be an excellent player at Syracuse. And Kidd with another steal. Now, for those who've been watching, you can tell Jason Kidd has been everywhere on the court. He goes by the nickname of Robo Guard because he is energy personified. Richard Keene throws that one away, and wholesale change is coming in for the West. It gave you one of the things that people have to understand, too. These kids, in, in many cases, have been off of playing now for two, three weeks. So the conditioning factor has really gotten away from them. Here we see Kid coming down, waiting for the numbers to come up. Slows down, makes the reverse dribble, and then dishes on inside the team. He didn't quite have the angle for the shot, wisely hung on to the ball. The West squad in the rear. This is Dwayne Spencer. Knocked loose from behind. Loose ball picked up by John Wallace. There's Michael Lloyd, John Wallace, Tony Delp. Steve Edwards and Serge Wicker, the five in white for the East All-Stars. Knocked out of bounds and it stays East. But one of the things that's always difficult is for the seven footers in the game, unless they're the superstars like the Patrick Ewings have played in this game, is the fact that it's going to be a while for them to catch up to the quickness level of the 6'8, 6'9 player that's got to go again. And Greg Simpson missing a dunk. Ball stolen by Michael Lloyd. Boy, Nolan Richardson loves this young man. This young man also showed extremely well in the slam dunk contest. Well, JB, one of the reasons that Dunbar did not lose the game is because of the intensity this young man plays. Uh, you know, he is just one of those guys that's going to be in games that you win. He figures out ways to win ball games. Very tough attitude and uh, I, I really like his focus not only in this game but the way he handled himself in the days coming up to the game. To be a real his focus. Arkansas. You talk about his focus, it was hard to get him to smile yesterday. He was thinking about the game so much. He looked at the basket and lost it. This is Chris Collins handling the ball, a guard out of Northbrook, Illinois, Doug Collins' son, the yes, NBA All-Star. And hammered on the inside was Kenyon Murray. Billy, one of the things that we were most impressed about Michael Lloyd, not only the focus because he's a competitor, but he talked about dedicating his season for a good purpose. Yes, he did. Uh, one of his teammates and lifelong friends died in a automobile crash, which he happened to be in the car. The players all got together, dedicated the season to him. Of course, went undefeated. Number one ranked team in the United States. And, of course, that young man you're referencing, Rodney Beasley, a teammate. Dante Wright and Michael Lloyd, who was killed in an auto accident. And 18-17, West lead, 11-44, left in the half. Atlanta, where the West beats the East by a score of 18-17. to 17. And number 20 wearing the red is Chris Collins. And alongside me is his dad, TNT NBA broadcaster, former coach of the Chicago Bulls and former Philadelphia 76er. And how easy is it to disassociate yourself from the family relationship and judge the talents of your son, Doug Collins? Well, Greg, you have to be very careful not overstep the boundary of trying to be a coach for your child because then resentment sets in. So Chris and I are much anything. We're friends, and I think that's the most important thing. How about his abilities as a player? Well, I look for him to go into Duke. It's a great opportunity, and I think it's wonderful he's going to get the chance to be with these players of this caliber. Tell our viewers the story that you told me outside the stadium this morning about the first, the very first McDonald's game. Well, I was playing in Philadelphia, and I went over to see John Wood, and they asked me, to help him with a press conference. Christmas 4, it was in 1978. He fell asleep by my feet, and last night, as a McDonald's All-American, he got his picture made with John Wood, so that was a very special night. Proud beaming Papa alongside me, Doug Collins, JB and Billy. All right, Greg, and thank you very much. Chris goes to get the score and gets blocked from behind by John Wallace. Strong move by Chris Davis. And he's been one of our favorite players, uh, J.B., in watching. He's going to Kansas next year. Ben Davis, of course, played in this game last year uh, out of Kansas. Uh, no relation, as far as, as far as we know, but it, uh, an outstanding player. One of those guys that goes to the board, gets his hands on a lot of basketballs on the inside. He's going to be an outstanding player in the Big Eight. You only had to see Chris Davis play for five minutes in practice, and he said, I like that kid yeah. already. He just gets around the basketball. 
Tony Delk does a good job of saving the ball inbound. Delk with a three-pointer. <laughs> Boy, can he nail go. Oh, Rick Pitino loves that. Three. Three. I guarantee it. Just a great outside shooter. Now, it's interesting. They have a three-point shooting contest, and Collins was the winner of the three-point contest. They got in the finals with, with Richard Keene, who's going to Illinois. So it looks like the Illinois kids are pretty outstanding shooters. But I, I love Delk's range, and, and, of course, his quickness to be able to get that shot off. He will be outstanding at Kentucky. Well, the book on Delk is that he seemingly has unlimited range, and we're getting an indication of that already. The East team's not anywhere near as fluid as the West so far, as far as getting the big people involved in the offense. Everything's one-on-one. -on -one. Lloyd passes back to Zwicker, and Zwicker goes high with the shot. Fight for the rebound. Now, here's a young man who really has improved what, by leaps and bounds. Still, obviously, his best basketball is ahead of him. Well, one of the things about Zwicker and about anybody that, that's big when you watch this game, you cannot keep tight. He is seven foot tall. He's going to play above a lot of people. He'd probably be a redshirt prospect at North Carolina next year. It was interesting when we talked to him yesterday, JB, talking about growing up. Uh, in the Netherlands, and, and reading magazines, and his dream was always to play at the University of North Carolina, even though he had never been to the United States. And his dream has come through, a guy who has worked himself into a decent ball player. And there is a very decent ball player there, Michael Lloyd. Seven of the last nine points scored for the East, scored by Michael Lloyd. Excellent hit-ahead pass by Edwards going to Miami. This is Chris Davis for Spencer. And Spencer goes high and is fouled by Zucker. Dwayne Spencer, 6'10", slight of bill at 190 pounds, headed for Georgetown. He's the kind of player that will play on the perimeter at Georgetown. People talked about it's going to be a replacement for Alonzo Mourning. He is not that kind of player now, nor do I think he will be. I think he's a perimeter type player. The Louisiana Class 4A Player of the Year. And he's off the back of the rim. Next Saturday, CBS Sports presents Major League Baseball as the Ultimax Athletics take on the Bash Brothers. Jose Canseco and Mark McGuire visit the Homer Dome in Minneapolis to take on the Twins. Next Saturday at 1 o'clock Eastern right here on CBS. Lane violation takes away Spencer's shot. MVP of the state tournament this year in addition to being player of the year in the, the state of Louisiana. Delk being defended by Chris Collins. Strong coming to the ball. Nobody getting in the ball as he reaches the point that he best receives. Bad shot by Lloyd. Follow up by Strong. No, nobody is going to get him the pass, so he goes to get his own rebound. And a three-point shot nailed by Greg Simpson, the young man. He's the second player here who's headed for Ohio State, the other, of course, being Charles Macon. He and Delph, if he thinks I can bring the outside shooting that Randy Ayers needs at Ohio State. That's right. He and Delph, very similar in regard to the way that they play. They've got the great outside shot. Both can defend. They've got good quickness and should be outstanding players. Kenyon Murray. The follower by Spencer. Murray's a nice flashing player, although he didn't make that layup. Uh, he impressed us yesterday the way that he could flash the basket. As I said before, the swing players, the 6'4 to 6'7, 8 players, are really outstanding in this particular recruiting class. Next year is supposed to be the year, again, of the big man. And there you see that great range by Delk. Boy, it may be the year of the three-point shot from this young man, Delk, at Kentucky. As Collins goes in, can't get the drop. Rebounded by Simpson, and he heads back to three-point land and takes the shot. In and out. Lloyd, not afraid to take it to the basket, but he throws it away to Simpson. A two on one. He's going to try to judge. And a nice pass over to Collins. Uh, uh, Simpson was going to try to take that ball and dunk. Game getting a little sloppy here. Really losing the score balance. And Lloyd has kept him in the game basically on one and one moves. Well, that's especially of Michael Lloyd. A 22 points per game score for Dunbar of Baltimore. And Lloyd is defending Chris Collins. Kenyon Murray inside to Dwayne Spencer. He's showing his quick move, but he can't get over that long arm of Zwicker. And again, you can't take, teach the heights, JB, and Zwicker stands up there. He's got a body. He's going to have to do a lot of weight work, a lot of quickness work. 
but again, seven feet tall, he's got a nice, nice touch on his shot. Very intelligent young man, he can score languages. There it is, throwing right over the top again. Shot you gotta put away. The one thing he does is he keeps the ball high though. <laughs> Now, the folks in the Washington metropolitan area saw that same move two weeks ago at the Capitol Classic, Billy, where he went in and the PA announced and said, Greg Simpson to Greg Simpson. Well, it's a move that was fun for the All-Star game. Might have been fun in high school, but he can put it away in the closet <laughs> after this game. Oh, no, that's the kind of move you dust off only yep. for an All-Star game. Exactly. He uses that one again when he plays maybe in the East-West game. In college, hopefully he doesn't, because that would mean he wouldn't be in the Final Four at the time when he's a senior. But so Randy Ayers will smile only now at it, not in practice or a game. A 31-30 lead by the East. How popular is Greg Simpson, you ask, out of Lima, Ohio? 15,000 baseball cards, like the one you're looking at, printed up about this young man and distributed around Lima, Ohio. As a matter of fact, they're trading them all around the city. The only kid here who has a radio station from his hometown here to broadcast the game, WIMA Wima, on the AM dial, Mike Mullen and John Barton are calling the game. I say that's pretty popular, Billy. I guarantee you that. For a high school player, already a legend in his own town. Much less on time. The young man who was Mr. Basketball in Ohio junior and senior season this year dropped in by 57 points, breaking his own record from the year before of 53. Changing lineups again a little bit. We've got uh, Macon back into the ball game now. Roderick Rhodes back in the game. See if he can get started. He's got big size advantage on Simpson right now. Simpson over to Strong. Strong. Oh, what a move. Goal pending on Dwayne Spencer. Oh, we heard you talk about Jim Beheim being a good golfer. We also know he's a great coach. He's standing by with Greg Gump. All right, JB, and NCAA rules and regulations prohibit you from talking about anyone you might be interested in in this game, but who have you seen out here who impresses you so far? Well, you know, every time you see Jason Kidd play, you get excited. He's just such a quick player. I was telling Lou, sitting over there, you got to win every game next year. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Lou, but he's a, he's a tremendous player. There's a, there's a lot of good athletes here, and, and you know, he's the kind of guard, bro, that, you know, you look at, he just, a, he makes everybody on the court better. He just gets on the ball, and he can score, too, so he's exciting. We often talk about impact players. You see any of those going out and making a difference in a program next year? You no, know, it's so difficult to tell, you know. Just looking at the first time this year, whoever thought the Michigan kids would do what they did, and we get a kid, you know, Lawrence Moten, who comes in and, you know, didn't make this game, and, you know, it's really telling everybody over there, and there's a lot of kids that aren't here today that are going to surprise you next year, and, and look what Lawrence did for us. He just, I mean, he really uh, was the difference in our program this year. And uh, there's kids out here that do that, and then there's about 10 kids at home watching right now on TV saying, hey, I'm going to do that next year. <laughs> Coach Jim Beheim, thank you very much. Thank you. TV. All right, Greg, as Roger Rhodes is fouled and takes it to the free throw line. You know, Jimmy Beheim mentioned about the kids who are not and were not in the South American Chris. Billy, you had a nice stat on that last night to show the kind of talent that there is around the Well, we both had an opportunity to talk at the banquet. Uh, one of the great talks you've ever heard, of course, came from John last night. But my, my message to the kids is the fact that this is a tremendous honor to be in this particular game to be selected based on what you've done. But if you look down across the country, this year Bob Sir at Florida State was the ACC Rookie of the Year. He's worthy of records with the Atlantic 10 Rookie of the Year. Fred Hoiberg at Iowa State was the Big A Rookie of the Year. Lawrence Bolton is the Big A Rookie of the Year at Syracuse. None of those kids were McDonald's All-American. So it doesn't guarantee you automatic status. And these guys have to understand that. Well, you mentioned John Wood being the best speaker last okay. night. What a marvelous man sitting in between Sonny Hill on his right and Coach Morgan Wooten and Howard Garfinkel. But John Wooden just a last act all the way. Well, Coach Wooden and Coach Wooten, who was your high school coach, of course, are the two key factors in the selection process and the honorary chairman, obviously, of this particular game. And your high school coach, J.B., is going to do something next year that's, uh, boy, almost unprecedented. He's got 990 wins now in his career, 134 losses. Be getting that thousandth win. He's starting to feel like an old man. Or, yes, uh, he looks younger every year. I can't stand. Oh, what a pass and what a catch! Great attempt by Charles Macon on the pass from Chris Collins. Macon uh, with those high shoulders that he has. You know, you see guys like that that have the high shoulders. 
He's listed 6'8", plays bigger than that, and we'll see this pass right here. He is way up around that rim. Going to be quite an addition to Ohio State. Boy, what a nice pinpoint pass from Chris Collins that time. Turnovers plaguing the East right now. Seven turnovers in Macon, trying to get on track only one of five from the floor. Collins told us about his visit to Duke this year, and the guy that showed him around is the fellow that he hopes to someday take over the position, Bobby Hurley. So uh, kind of a nice thing. And, and, you know, Chris really has his head on straight, the fact that he says, I will be the apprentice for Mr. Hurley, although I'll try hard and practice and, and learn an awful lot at Duke for the eventual job, potentially, being running that club from the point guard position. Not only a glorious day for Chris Collins in terms of being Easter, as he mentioned, but it's his birthday, 18th birthday for Chris Collins. Here's my man, Chris Davis, uh, already put one back in, so active on the inside. And Billy, what is it about, again, that first five minutes of watching him yesterday in practice and the day before that you like? Well, one of the things that I think anybody who watches a game of, you don't worry about how tall a guy is or how big and strong he is. That's your first impression. How quickly does he get to the ball? His instincts to rebound, his instincts defensively to be in the right place. I, I just am very impressed with that young man. And of course, he's shown it here today. He's got five rebounds, six points already. Dwayne Simpkins, Dante Wright, Serge Zwicker, Martise Moore, and Roger Rhodes, the five in life for the East. Zwicker with the rebound and a quick follow. -up. What a nice agility for the big guy. He's got some raw talent, Billy. Well, you've got it, North Carolina next year, of course. Uh, Montross is still there, Wenstrom is still there, Salvadori is still there. That's so you've four, got, seven quarters. Right, so you have to figure that uh, it might be a good opportunity for him to sit out a year. Pick up that experience, get quicker, stronger. Simpkins for three. Got a good looking jump shot out there, but it, it, his shot selection today may be a little questionable. Needs to get the other guys in the game. Nice rebound and baseball <laughs> pass by Harrington and a nice pretty behind the back push. From Jason Kidd to Richard Keane. Keane gets the three-pointer. Give the credit to Jason Kidd. He knows where everybody is on the floor. Keane did the right thing, stepping out beyond the three-point line. He already realizes that if you get in the right place, Jason Kidd will get you the ball. Williamson strength with those hands. Look at that touch pass. Nice pass by, by Keane. Harrington, strong move. Oh, fella Harrington. You know, the first time I heard about this kid was four years ago. Marshall Sanders, an ex-All-American player in high school down in Mississippi, now a prominent attorney. And Kenny Stabler, the ex-Open Raider quarterback, told me about this guy as a ninth grader. They say he is absolutely awesome. Dante Bright headed for UMass with the basket, and it's a 39-38 West League with 325 left in a half. And there's Dwight again, another one of those great swing players that are in this game. Good steal. Nice defense by Roderick Rhodes, the young man out of Jersey City, St. Anthony High School. Here we see Jason Kidd with a touch pass over there, making good right to do it. Keen with a nice look pass on the inside, and there's Harrington with that powerful move. You know, Harrington likes contact, J.B. where the West leads the East 39 to 38. I'm Greg Gumbel. Three minutes and 18 seconds remain until halftime. And at halftime, I'll be along to update you on scores and highlights of what's going on in the NBA. And we'll also talk with a couple of coaches on hand here. That man, Bobby Cremens, the head coach of Georgia Tech, and John Calipari, UMass head coach, will also join me. JB? All right, Greg, thank you very much. And speaking of John Calipari, isn't he uh, back there directing things in the truck with uh, George Barris and Larry Cavalina? Well, let's hope not. <laughs> he better stay right in the job he's got, which is uh, doing a great job at UMass. That he is. One of these premier young coaches on the national scene. Lloyd and Kidd, this could be a good matchup out front now. Lloyd nice pass to Keene. And Harrington with the follow. Oh, no, uh, Keene, of course, broke his wrist this year. Uh, and had to lay out of 10 games and still comes back and makes McDonald's All-American. Going to Illinois and going to be an outstanding player. Despite Very that impressive. nagging wrist injury, he averaged 21 points a game. That being Richard Keene. He's a better ball handler than what I thought. Much better passer than what I anticipated looking at his stats. Good well, outlet. As much as Kidd is a passer supreme, Harrington getting to every oh, loose ball. Goes. Nice pass to Williamson. Now you talk about a power player inside. Jimmy, you know the thing I think makes Kidd so effective? 
is that he can do so much with his left hand. He has an ability to throw the ball in any direction with his left hand. He controls it with his right and then goes ahead. There's Harrington again. Can you Big believe? Time I mean, Harrington has played maybe about 10, 12 minutes, Billy. He's got 10 rebounds in the first half. And Jason Kidd with the scoop shot. That's a 45-38 West lead with 209. And again, I talked to the youngsters last night about how sophisticated the viewing public is. Certainly, they're taking note of the job that Harrington is doing on the boards. Beautiful fake by Dante Bright, even though it didn't go in the basket. For Roderick Rhodes, Dante Bright, Kenyon Murray, Martise Moore. Boy, we're talking about a lot of kids at that same side. Oh, what a pass by Kidd. Right, and Harrington realized he comes back smiling. I should have had it. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and, and there's a case. And Harrington can't believe two things. Number one, the pass in the first place. And number two, how did I miss that? But, you know, anybody who's going to play with kid better keep their hands and eyes oh, open because that ball is going to be there. They will have the name of that ball embedded on their foreheads. There's Roderick Rhodes, another one of those outstanding wing players. Going to Kentucky. Wait! Young man right there taking the ball out of bounds. That's Roger Rhodes. Well, it put it off the back of Williamson. Was going to go ahead and hit it off his back since he turned and lay it up himself, which is a legal play. Are they not savvy? That's right. <laughs> Alert. Many people say that Roderick is the finest player that St. Anthony's ever had. That includes Terry DeHair, Jerry Walker, former teammates Bobby Hurley, Danny Hurley. Quite a list. That foul was on Corliss oh, Williamson. His first. Yeah, he's passed. Wright can't get the drop, but the follow. Rebounded by Macon. Wright steals it. Boy, did he stay with it. Dante Wright, I mentioned before, Billy, and you can explain the difference. Not a great shooter, but a great scorer. He is. He's got a lot of ways to get it up there. He's got a good, quick first step. Has the ability to look at that basket, so he kind of freezes his defender. He looks at the basket and can go either left or right with it. And a three-pointer by Macon at 6'8". The big fella has the perimeter range. He's got seven points. Typical Big Ten type of body as well. Yeah, but he's a, he's a much better shooter than most kids that have those kind of bodies. He can't step out there. That was not unusual for him to make that shot. There's Williamson with another powerful rebound. Kid. Oh, he knew where they were. Williamson and the foul. Oh, oh, nice going by Bacon. But Kid knew where they were. He just counted those bodies as they crossed half court. He at the Capital Classic game in Washington, D.C., actually at Cole Fieldhouse on the campus of the University of Maryland, did not have a particularly good scoring game. Only 11 points, but 10 rebounds, and they credit him with four steals. I think he had easily double that. Played the entire game, that being Jason Kidd. Well, Hubie Brown, one of the real great thinkers in basketball. Now, of course, everybody knows an announcer, but one of the great clinicians in the game. Always talks about touches. You know, how many touches did the guy have defensively? That's where Kidd comes up defensively so well. Here he's being handled by Lloyd. There, there it is. There is a touch. Maybe a foul from the back, but will be called in the college level against him. But still, he got a touch there. And you see eight seconds remaining in the first half. The West is in the middle of an 11-2 run. Let's see if a clear out for either Moore. They've got three guys they can clear out for very well. Wright, Moore, or Rose. Wright takes the shot. Rebounded. Knocked out of bounds by Delk with three seconds remaining. When you talk about how many touches, the one thing Jason Kidd is on defense is an absolute nuisance. Smart play by Michael Lloyd. Realize you're going to try to get the ball to Kidd. Went right over there to defend him. Oh. Good pass. <laughs> and it would have counted had it gone in. That's the end of the first half with the score of the West on top by 10. We'll return to Alexander Memorial Coliseum to Greg Gumbel in a halftime report after this message and a word from your local station. Well, this game today is not all, the only event that these high school All-Americans take part in this week. Thursday night, Carlos Strong, six foot eight inches from nearby Athens, Georgia, soaring over six people with a mammoth slam to win the slam dunk competition. Carlos Strong is headed for the University of Georgia. And if this face looks familiar, Chris Collins resembles his dad, Doug, shoots like he did too. Chris winning the three-point contest on 17 of 25 shooting. Chris from Northbrook, Illinois, will be a member of the Duke Blue Devils this fall. Well, we'll chat a little bit with a couple of coaches who happen to be on hand today. John Calipari of the University of Massachusetts and Bobby Cremens of Georgia Tech. All that and much more as we continue from Atlanta in just a moment. They just got to throw it under the basket. Under the basket. Up. Far as time. Oh, holy mackerel. Holy mackerel. Well,
personally, it, it meant a lot to me for the simple fact that I felt that I accomplished a lot during my high school career, and I feel that I had a pretty good high school career, and it was a prestigious award for me and a great honor for me to play in the McDonald's All-American game. With that shot, James Forrest made uh, one of these guys pretty happy in uh, the NCAA tournament. I'm joined by a couple of fine head coaches in the NCAA. On my left is Georgia Tech's Bobby Crimmins, and over here on my right is John Calipari of the University of Massachusetts. Let me first ask you, Bobby, about that shot by James Forrest. You didn't recruit him for his outside shooting. No, we didn't, Greg. It, it was a wonderful moment. I wish we could have carried it on to the Memphis State game, but Memphis State played a great game. They had a great ending. But James is only a freshman, and hopefully he'll have a few more chances to make shots like that. When we were in Springfield, Massachusetts for this game last year, you had James Forrest and Travis Best in that game. Have they lived up to your expectations, everything you thought they would be so far? I believe so, Greg, but there's too much expectations put on these young men. I, I'm an advocate of freshmen being ineligible and players, uh, sophomore, junior, and senior, play the varsity. But, you know, we have a big-time business in sports today, and it's asking too much for these freshmen to come in and do so much. We talked about the fun you had in the tournament. How about this guy, John Calipari of the University of Massachusetts? Billy Packer said earlier, John Calipari watching on hand here, and I think that bears some explaining because you were not here in the arena for the game. Well, I had to receive the letter of intent, which I haven't received yet, from Dante, and... Uh, by not receiving it, I couldn't be in the building. Uh, he was supposed to send it, it didn't arrive yet, so I'm out in the truck. They put a little box to make sure I don't jump outside the box. Uh, but it's a lot of fun out there. I said they make more decisions than coaches out there. What was the story about one of your recruits talking about who would you rather be remembered as? Um, Is that Sean Miller? Oh, uh, Sean Miller said to me, uh, the, t the team that got beat the way it did or the team that got beat by 40 by Duke. Sean Miller mentioned that to me after our tough loss to Kentucky. But uh, he's, a, he's a good kid and wanted to try to pick me up after that game. Coach, are you impressed by what you see in these kids out here? Yes, I think you have a lot of talent. And, and I agree with Bobby. People sometimes expect too much out of freshmen. The Lou Rowe for us was a great example of a young man coming in. He only played 19 or 20 minutes a game. And it was a great experience for him. And I think next year it's going to pay dividends for him. You got two ball players out of this game last year. You've got Martise Moore coming. Uh, tell us what Martise will bring to Georgia Tech. Well, we'd like him to replace John Barry, but John Barry had an incredible year for us, Greg. So, again, we got to be careful. But we have another Barry, a Drew Barry, who we redshirted. So I'd like to see Martise, Martise and Drew Barry fight for that opening that John left. We're, I think we're all agreeing that not the best players, not all of the best players in the country are here. There are still an awful lot of good ones out there. That, that's absolutely right. You, you never know about these sleepers. Um, John Barry's a good example. Okay. John, good luck to you and the UMass. So you're losing a bunch of starters next year. We lose three starters, but I think we're going to be okay. Uh, we've got good players in our program who are good kids, and I'm proud of them. And uh, hopefully we can carry on what we started this past season. John Calipari, Bobby Crimmins, thank you very much. Now, the players here today do more than play basketball. They help raise thousands and thousands of dollars for children's charities. Now, on Friday, the All-Americans paid a holiday visit to the Ronald McDonald Children's Cancer Research Clinic. And with today's game, over $1 million has now been contributed to this cause, making it a most fulfilling endeavor for both the children and the players as well. 50 to 40, the West leading the East. Our halftime score, James Brown and Billy Packer will be back with second half action from Atlanta, Georgia. In just a moment, we'll take time out. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports Sunday presentation of the McDonald's All-American High School Basketball Game is sponsored by McDonald's. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. Kellogg's, proud sponsor of our 1992 U.S. Olympic team. And by United, come fly the airline that's uniting the world. Come fly the friendly skies. Here on the campus of Georgia Tech, where the West All-Stars lead the East All-Stars by 10, the biggest lead of the game for the West. And Billy, a new shot chart, if you will, showing where the West has done most of this damage. The gold shot indicates shots made. Well, one of the things that, of course, has created that has been Jason Kidd. He's been feeding the ball down inside to the proper people, and you can see those shots on the perimeter. They're primarily made when Jason Kidd penetrates and dumps the ball back out to the outside, particularly to Jason uh, Jason Kidd is hit to the outside to Richard Keene, who is smart enough to realize that, hey, this guy's going to penetrate, get open, he'll eventually get me the ball. Coach Woodney is an amazing young passer, isn't he? 
very definitely one of the best I've seen in a long time and uh, he, he will always look even better when uh, he's had more time to work with uh, different players with so sometimes he, he really fools them and you can see the East shooting uh, spread out around the court they really haven't had uh, any kind of unity whatsoever as far as fellas putting the ball in the hands of the proper man at the proper time which I guess is expected in an all-star game yes I think all-star games are always to me very interesting and they're they're never the best played but they're always e extremely interesting and uh, there's so many uh, fine jumpers out here and they're so quick and uh, I, I sure like to star a team and have this good <laughs> you know coach we've talked uh, over the years a lot about recruiting and putting together a team I think some of the things that you said to me that have, that, have, that have interested me so much over the years is that you would always take quickness over size. Is that still true today? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I think uh, every coach wants them big and quick, but where many coaches will give up a certain amount of quickness to get more size, I personally would give up a little more size to get more quickness, but everyone wants them big and quick. And how about the, the, we have the advent of the three-point shot since you retired from coaching. How much effect would that have had on the way that you put together your offensive strategy had you had the three-point shot in, that, in those days? I don't think it would have changed mine very much. Uh, there were years when I, uh, I'm sure we would have utilized it uh, uh, tremendously, and other years we wouldn't have used it that so much because it would depend a lot upon your personnel. And uh, I wouldn't uh, try to capitalize on it to the extent that uh, some do today, like uh, I'd say uh, Patino. I believe he sort of builds around that. I wouldn't do that. But I, I'd certainly take advantage of it when I had uh, per proper personnel. Of course, you always were a man-to-man -man defensive coach, so defending the three is something that probably would have fit in re relatively easily in your structure. Uh, I can't see where I would have changed any at all from a defensive point of view, no. Well, let's one see question what I wanted to have here. One question I have is, as you size up the high school seniors this year compared to years past when you were coaching, what's the major difference in the players now? Uh, Jim, I don't think there's any question that bothers. The years goes by, they're getting uh, bigger and stronger. Uh, I think maybe uh, uh, um, exercises, diets, uh, different things that we're using now are helping to uh, bring that about. But as the and they're becoming better individually. But I'm a little concerned that as the players become better individually, I think we lose a little bit in team play. We're going to keep Coach Wooden with us for a few moments here. We'll take a look at Corliss Williamson with that individual move which coach was talking about coach john wooden 10 national championships in 12 years at the helm at ucla this is michael lloyd and john wallace can't handle it old fellow harrington up to make it everybody trying to make one pass maybe a little bit more spectacular than is necessary coach that often happens in all-star games you see uh, sometimes in uh, uh, regular regular games through the season I don't like it. I didn't want to see it very much on my team. <laughs> we saw a layup earlier on by Simpson where he put the ball underneath his arm, flipped it around, laid it up. I said to JB, that's one he can put in the closet for the rest of his career. <laughs> yeah. Definitely an all-star game shot only. As Harrington trying to get the handle on the ball, gets his own rebound and goes up strong and is fouled by John Wallace. So Othello Harrington will take a trip to the free throw line. And Billy, as we review the halftime stats, West commanding rebounding league specifically because of the man at the free throw line, Othello Harrington, who had 10. And he's got 11 now. Field goal percentage to West a bit above the East in that category. Turnovers a little sloppy, but as we mentioned, such is the case in all-star games. You know, Coach, you're one of the things that you always look at those percentages and you look at the turnovers. I think a lot of times bad shooting percentage and the fact that you're not getting rebounds, you're taking bad shots. And, and one of the things that we talked about that East team is the way that they're distributing the ball and not getting good uh, shot selection. I think that's uh, true uh, un unquestionably. But one thing leads to another, and they sort of run in a cycle that way. Michael you know, Lloyd, Roger Groves, John Wallace, you know, a lot of body contact down here, JB. Wherever Harrington goes, he's going to let people know that he'll put a body on you. And now they have Harrington, Macon, and Williamson out on the court at the same time. Really powerful kid. Kid back to Macon, and Macon off the back of the iron, rebounded by Michael Lloyd. The East and White. Rhodes for three. Well, Roderick has not gotten off offensively very well today. He's a much better player than we're seeing in this particular game. But again, you know, I, I think back, Kristen Leitner, 
was the player of the year in college basketball this year, played in the McDonald's All-American game, scored a total of two points. So it's not like uh, this game is the end all. Oh, not at all. <laughs> Kid over to Macon. Inside to Harrington. Harrington blocked nicely by Wallace and gets his own oh, nice Blocked job. again. So a great defensive effort on the part of John Wallace, number 44 in white, the young man who's heading to Syracuse. I always felt, uh, Billy, uh, 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 seeing a prospect play, if you see him play only one time, that's probably worse than not seeing him at all. Because uh, he can have a bad game or he can have an exceptionally good game. Oh, there's Keane with that tremendous range on that jump shot. He finished second to Collins in the three-point shooting contest out here. And certainly going to help uh, Coach Henson at, uh, at Illinois. Yes, and I think the boy is it uh, Delp that's going to Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, he, he'll help. He fits you know, in. Yeah. Yes, he does. Fits in. Well, and, and that's so important for a young man to pick a college where the style will fit his particular style of the game. Oh, uh, very definitely, yes. Nice attempt to play between Kidd and Macon. Talk about eye communication. More. You have Martise Moore, who will be playing right here at Georgia Tech with the turnaround jumper. And excellent pass by Roderick Rhodes that time as well. A lot of swing players, the six, the in-between size, 6'5", the 6'8", players that uh, seem to have the skills to play almost anywhere on the court. Well, I believe now, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, the shortest player on the squad, 6'2", isn't it? Yep. You see, uh, last evening in presenting the rings, and they... Uh, Morgan was giving me information about 6'6 six, six guard, now I'm looking up to a 6'6 six, six guard. <laughs> you see a lot of them today, though. Well, I think, you know, we're almost doing away with the term position guard, center forward. Guys are just players today. And probably always were, you know, if the guy can play the game, it's the position is immaterial. I, I think I really always felt that way. I never uh, thought in terms of a point guard or a, a strong forward or power forward. I thought two forwards and two guards, and one of them would be handling the ball more, and I guess he'd be considered the, the point guard. Martise Moore hammered Charles Macon, so he picks up the personal foul as Macon takes a trip to the free throw line. You know, JB, I, I didn't want to put down having a good performance in this game when I mentioned Leitner with two points in the game, you know, player of the year. There's a guy named Michael Jordan to probably be the NBA player of the year this year. He scored 30 in this game. You can remember that game back in Wichita, Coach. I'll never forget it. There are a few things involved around that game that will always make it <laughs> <laughs> And make it. Well, Michael's mom has forgiven everybody now that he wasn't the MVP. I mean, he's had a fairly good career yes. since he left the All-Star game. I know the feeling was that uh, there was no question in the mind of most uh, everyone that that uh, Michael probably was the best player but in that particular game uh, they didn't feel that he was the most valuable player and that, 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 oh, is a difference. oh yes. very definitely I've often said that uh, Al Cinder is the most valuable player that I've ever seen but I wouldn't say he's the best player now, coach you were so gracious in, in an interview that I did for a special uh, just recently and I found it a revelation that you said that the, the, the slam dunk, which we all thought was aimed at Ben Lou Alcindor, was in fact not aimed at him, although it did help him to become a better ball player. I think unquestionably he felt it was aimed at him, and I thought it was aimed because of the Houston team that had everybody dunking and hanging on the baskets, and they had to hold up the start of games to uh, bend the basket uh, back up. But I told Lewis that uh, it'll only make him a better ball player. All right, Coach John Wooden, thank you very much for joining us, Coach, and uh, we'll take a commercial break. We'll be back with the West Ahead, 59-45. 59-45, West on top with 15-58 left in the game, and coming up next on CBS Sports, it's final round coverage of the MCI Heritage Classic as we take a look at the leaderboard, and Billy, this is all you. Uh, we got Davis Love, that uh, UNC man. He's uh, won two straight, and he's going for his third. Looks like he's in good shape. Marco Mayer, if you ever want to start playing golf JB follow his swing he's got one of the great swings but there's a name not up there Freddie Couples taking a week off our runner probably exhausted from the final four but he's gonna be playing next week in the Kmart GGO so uh, yeah, he'll be back in action I bet you everybody's happy to see him not uh, have a golf bag at a tournament uh, very, with everything that's going a very expensive runner indeed good play Steve by Edwards. Edwards for three Steve Edwards 
headed to the Big East Conference this year. He'll be playing for Leonard Hamilton down at the University of Miami. First time in the history of the McDonald's All-American team that two brothers have made it. His brother Doug, of course, outstanding player at Florida State. It's interesting he talked about playing against his brother in the summertime. He said he doesn't go, I can't go inside with him and he can't come outside with me. A mismatch. Yeah. And a mismatch on the inside is Harrington with the nope. wicked left-handed slam. Nobody back on defense, and Lloyd makes a smart play, realizing nobody back calls timeout instead of turning the ball over. Yeah. With the West leading at 61-48, welcome back to Atlanta, everyone. Greg Gumbel joined by Duke assistant coach Tommy Amaker, and uh, that's two-time NCAA champion, Duke. You're just sitting over there with the biggest grin on your face. It must feel awful nice. It feels great to be having a chance to win two national championships. Our guys performed very well. We're very happy, and uh, now we can take some time off and rest and enjoy it. You were part of that uh, point guard tradition at Duke. Duke probably started it, really, continued with... Uh, Bobby Hurley Jr., and now you got Chris Collins coming. Tell me what you think he's going to contribute to the program. Well, there were obviously some good point guards before Tommy Amaker came to Duke, but I had an opportunity to come there and play for Coach K and have an opportunity to play as a freshman. So Bobby Hurley did that same thing. It's taken it to another level, and I think Chris has an opportunity to fill in some big footsteps there. And when I said to you that you still look like you have your playing weight, what did you tell me? I said they just don't feed me a Duke. I just have to get on the road all the time. <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. JB. All right, Greg. Thank you very much. And boy, Tommy Amaker, there's a class act. He really is. Of course, Duke, you know, won that championship in 91, of course, again this year. In 91, they had six McDonald's All-Americans on that squad. That equals the all-time total which North Carolina had back in 82 when they had six McDonald's All-Americans on their team. And every team that's won the national championship have had at least one McDonald's All-American on it uh, since this team is inception back in 1977. Well, this All-American team goes by the name the Dream Team as you take oh, and Michael Lloyd with a nice dream of a move on the inside. As a matter of fact, of the 370 McDonald's All-Americans named since the inception of 1977, 97% have gone on to play for a Division I program. Make it a little quick with that jump shot. Wallace with the rebound, throws it away. There's Jason Kidd. Another steal by Kidd. Looking long. Williamson's going to a power move here. And Williamson, unselfishly, handed it off to Charles Macon. And Macon drops in the basket. Now, this is a pretty strong front line they have out there. And they, when they put Kidd in the backcourt, Macon, Harrington, and Williamson up front, J.B., that's a really good basketball team. And then Keen outside to play defense and shoot that jumper. The one difference that we mentioned at the top of the show, Billy, the difference between the East and the West. The West, bigger, more physical. The East, more oh, finesse. Another steal. And a, and a re-steal. Rhodes, who has not been able to get anything done offensively, doing a good job sticking his toes in there on defense. Five steals so far for Jason Kidd in today's game. Next Saturday, CBS Sports presents Major League Baseball, the Oakland Athletics, with the Bash Brothers, Jose Canseco and Mark McGuire. Take a visit to the Homer Dome in Minneapolis to take on the Minnesota Twins. It's coming your way next Saturday at 1 o'clock Eastern Time on CBS. Sean McDonough. Tim McCarver as we welcome Sean to the fold. That's a push off Harrington that time using too much body on Strong. But he doesn't mind. Jalen yesterday, as soon as that scrimmage started, he started putting bodies on people. I mean, he just loves contact. Saying, I'm here. Simpkins, Bright, Rhodes. Reminds me a little bit at that age of Carl Malone. You know, Carl Malone used to pick up a lot of fouls. When he played in the college level, and of course, in the pro game, he's established himself as one of the all-time great power forwards. But just the kind of guy that just loved to walk next to you and just bang it, you know, the, and the, not not maliciously, he just liked contact. <laughs> kind of reminds me of uh, Rick Mahorn and Jeff Rulin. There you go. When they played together with the Washington Bullets, they loved to bang up on everyone and each other. A hey, great recruiting story here between Roderick Rose and Jason Kidd. They met at All Star at, at uh, All Star camp, and kind of decided last summer that they'd go to school together. And that school was going to be Kentucky. Rhodes ended up going to Kentucky. He told his, his uh, former teammate Terry to hear, don't worry about this before the Kentucky visit. I'm coming to Seton Hall. <laughs> then he goes down to Kentucky, tells the hair, no, nope, I've changed my mind. I'm going to Kentucky. All along, he thinks Kid's going there, too. Kid never had California on his list. And all of a sudden, one day, he, he gets a recruiting visit by Roy Williams of Kansas. And he said Roy Williams was so outstanding 
in the way he presented the Kansas case that he went through his high school coach and said, you know what, I don't want any more coaches come and see me. But Kansas did such a great job, I'm confused. I've decided I'm going to stay at home and go to California. So Roy Williams, that was one of those good news, bad news stories. You know, you did a great recruiting job. It was so great. The kid decided to stay at home. A great sales pitch, and he says, I want no more visits. And, you know, Roderick was shocked because he read about it in the paper. He thought he was still coming to Kentucky as a teammate. So they kind of kid each other about it. Well, now they've all switched their focus to trying to convince Othella Harrington to attend schools with them. Give me an idea what Jason Kidd has meant to this game and the way it's changed. When he's on the floor, his team has a 19-plus. Uh, they're, they're ahead 19 points. So they actually, you know, they're, they're up by 15. When he's been on the floor, they've been ahead by 19. So basically, when he's off the floor, they're down four. And that's a classic illustration of a player making his teammates better whenever you hear that expression. Tony Dell. Rick Bailey, the three. I tell you, Patino has got to be licking his chops. Well, it was interesting, too, talking to Tony about watching the Kentucky-Duke game and how excited he was after that shot by Sean Woods went in and then how disappointed he was when go, Christian Leitner hit his turnaround jumper to beat, defeat Kentucky. So that young man's going to be in a lot of winning games down there. All 12 points scored by Tony Delk are from three-point range. Good out-of-bounds play. Collins for three. Now there's a quick release. Had that ball in shooting position the minute that he touched it and just released it. The top scorer in the state of Illinois averaged 31 points a game for Glenbrook North High School. Rose. Again, Roderick just not getting it done offensively, but he's got a good looking shot. Going to be a real factor. Carlos Strong on a nice pass from Dwayne Simpkins. Spencer. Simpson with the rebound. You see the East coming back. You know who's not on the floor? Jason Kidd. And we'll see what happens when he gets back. As Simpkins can't find the range. Spencer with the rebound for the West. This is Chris Collins. Got away with the charge that time. And Murray can't get the drop. Can't get it again. And grips Greg Simpson. They say he stepped on the line. A little sloppy on that sequence there. It'll go over to the east. And there's Othella Harrington with 16 rebounds. Right now he ties the second best rebounding effort held by four guys. Shaquille O'Neal, Rudy Not Woods, bad. Dallas Comages, and John Williams. Pretty good players. Great company to be in, I'd say. The best rebounding effort in this game, 24 by Sam Perkins back in 1980. Strong, strong with the basket. Change of the front line has really helped the East a little bit. Murray with a nice move. Can't find the range. Good pick up by Zwicker. And Delk loses it out of bounds, but it'll stay East ball. 68-57, West on top by 11 with 10.45 left in the game. And strong. <laughs> you, you said he likes to throw that body he around. He does, and see, now in the game, I mean, out, outside the game, Harrington's out of there, Williamson's out of there, and now strong is the power player on the floor. Maybe you mentioned those uh, great rebounding totals by previous players in the McDonald's game. To give you a feel of how these guys move on in the in the progress, of course, Magic played on the first of McDonald's All-American. He was on the first All-American team, was the number one draft choice. You've got the last four, Manning, Hervis Ellison, Coleman, and Larry Johnson. First guys picked in the NBA draft, all McDonald's All-American, and obviously will be this year when you have Shaquille, Leitner, and Morning. Mm. Uh, three former mm. McDonald's All-Americans all will be among the top three guys. Well, speaking of great guys, take a look at our active NBA All-Star team, former McDonald's All-Americans. Dominique Wilkins, Chris Mullins, Patrick Ewan, Michael Jordan, Isaiah Thomas. I know when that thing came up before, I said, hey, we've slighted Magic. You know, he was, but he's not active. Not I didn't active. realize. So Magic, we're underlining the word active there because uh, you'll be active in the Olympics, but not uh, presently in the NBA. Greg Simpson. 
And the last six NBA players of the year, between Magic and Michael, the last six years, those fellows have won every one of them. Of course, both former McDonald's All-Americans. So the cream de la cream starts off right here. Billy really says something about the job that the selection committee does. Yep. Simpkins, nice oh, pass to Strong. Back. How about and the East continues to come back, trailing down by eight. Carlos Strong, six of eight from the floor. Spencer off the glass. Wayne Spencer on the basket. Smart move on the part of Simpkins going back to Strong and dealt with a high arcing shot. His first two-point basket of the game, he's got 14 well, points. That was an instinctive play on his part to realize that the shot would get blocked with a normal trajectory and because of his great scoring ability, and as you mentioned, 37 a game this year, just lofted it right over the top of the defender. Excellent pass for the layup there, Strong cutting inside. Reverse layup, excellent play. Now as the East continues to cut into that lead, it'll be interesting to see what happens when Jason Kidd comes back in the game. But Billy, in this All-Star game, every player must play 10 minutes. There's Spencer, and as I said, not a replacement for Alonzo Mourning because he's going to be a perimeter player. And he shows you right there he can step outside at six foot nine or ten and take a good jump shot. Simpkins loses the handle on it, but recovered by Wallace. Wallace to Swicker. Swicker can shoot that shot. He's got a good touch out there. Simpson from Lima, Ohio. Nice pass Beautiful. ahead to Murray. And Murray loses the handle on the layup. This is Dell, headed for Kentucky and down court now. Blocked by Simpson. The numbers. He's trying, oh, he's trying to make too fancy a play. But Davis, Davis comes back with it anyway. Your guy. Yep. Chris Davis. Well, there's one that Roy Williams didn't do too good a selling job on because he's going to Kansas. Zwicker. Oh. With the follow. Well, the fans wanted to see a slam dunk, which is why they're active right now. But, nonetheless, it will qualify as a big dunk, huh? There he is, getting a rebound. They can say all they want about young, big people. Because give them a year or so. Yes, and then be all right. Exactly, exactly. We've got to understand the difference between the maturation process of the seven-footers and those that are 6'4 to 6'8. Tonight on CBS, if 60 Minutes could have one wish, it would be to turn the clock back 13 years to the first time we met Arthur Ashe. Meet him again tonight on CBS. That's followed by Murder, She Wrote. Then it's a Kraft General Foods special movie presentation, The Secret, all coming up tonight on CBS. And Billy, again, let's elaborate. Serge Wicker, the young man, as we mentioned, from the Netherlands, has only been playing organized basketball four to five years, and he really has improved his game considerably. He is going to be a decent player. JB, it was interesting yesterday, you with your great Olympic experience, uh, we're kidding him about ice, ice what was it, speed, speed skating, skating. Speed that's skating. right, big that's sport right. there. And he said he had to stop when his feet got too big. <laughs> <laughs> said he used to do it when his feet were smaller, and we said, well, what was smaller? His feet were 13 then, he says now he wears an 18. <laughs> well, he'd get over the finish line faster than most people, but could he ever get started with those feet? <laughs> well, Larry Cavallini got a shot of those feet. Of course, the young man who directed the speed skating coverage over in France. 74-65, 6.30, make it 8.30, left in the game. As Ira Ohio Greg Simpson buries the three. A lot of outstanding point guard potentials. We're looking at two right out here with the ball. Simpson and Simpkins. Wallace driving on Davis. Wallace has not had a big game yet today, but you can expect him to be an outstanding player in the Big East. Boy, good ball handling by Collins. Nice pass from Chris hey, Collins to it? Chris Davis. Yes, sir. Chris Davis again. He just can go find the ball. Beautiful pass, but great catch. The one thing that stuck out about Chris Collins is that he plays within his ability. Boy, what a nice pass. Stolen. Here comes Chris Davis. Guess what? Oh, circus. <laughs> yeah. He left the ground a little too early, and he realized that. Yeah. <laughs> Fans boo and they want dunks. I thought that was a spectacular and very intelligent play when he realized he left the ground too soon. Chris Davis is doing okay. 
Five for five in field goals. How about Spencer dribbling that ball up short? He looked like Chris Weber at the final four this year making that play. He can handle it. Yep. Collins. Wow. Three. Wow, that was a long way out. That was an NBA three. NBA range. Good bounce pass. Simpkins off the glass. And it's an 81-67. West Lee with 6.57 left. And that was the first basket of the game for Dwayne Simpkins. Going to be staying close to home, going to the University of Maryland, playing for Gary Williams and company. Kenyon Murray, hammered as he takes it to the hoop. Kenyon Murray, an excellent student with a 3.5, 2-3 grade point average, and I guess it's only appropriate that he'll be playing for a guy who's an academician himself. That Dr. Tom Davis at uh, Iowa. Kind of interesting, he was telling us the other day that he scored a 21 on his ACT as a sophomore in high school and just decided, hey, I can do better than that. On his second try, he said, made a 23 and could do higher. He was won the champion uh, award as the outstanding scholastic athlete out here and uh, certainly is going to be a fine player in the Big Ten. We're taking a look at Dante Bright, who was assessed the personal foul, and I'm sure the reason we stayed on that shot so long is John Calipari is up there in the truck directing as well, too, huh? <laughs> All right, as we take a look at the leaderboard coming up next, it'll be final round coverage of the MCI Heritage Classic. And really, I think I really am impressed with your, your knowledge of the golf game. I mean, are you a hacker or are you pretty good? No, I, let's not talk about it. I, I've got sons that know the game very well, so, you know, I have to watch it. And I like to watch it. I mean, it, you know what? I, I would say the guys in the golf tour probably are as big of basketball fans and as knowledgeable of basketball fans any segment of the population that I know of. That includes Greg Couples, of course, who is your runner, and Jim Mance is running during the Final Four, and Greg Norman, we know, is a big basketball fan. Well, most of them all have college allegiances, you know, so they stick right with it. 81-69, West on top. Williamson, blocked block. nicely by Dante Bright. Well, a real problem now for the East squad, because that lineup on the floor now with Harrington and Williamson, Keene and Kidd, have blended very nicely together. Well, fellow Harrington with his 13 point. And he's got 17 rebounds, make it 18. Nice pass. And Jensen Kidd, now he held onto the rim smartly that time, Billy. Well, you know, I have a I have a problem. I think that's something that the rules committee gonna have to look at, at in the future. Guys that go up and grab the rim before the ball goes through. I don't think that should be a basket. You notice that, that you know, he grabbed the rim and, and he, should, he has the right to do that. He's la Jason's laughing at it. Uh, but he grabbed the rim before the ball went through there. And we will return to the Alexander Memorial Coliseum after this message and a word from your local station. Easter Sunday here in Atlanta, Georgia, West on top, 85-69. And, Billy, I know you have strong feelings about this last play. Well, in, in this particular play, you'll watch what happens. Jason Kidd will grab the rim before the ball goes through. See, he pulls the rim down, then the ball goes through. Technically, that's a violation. You, now, if he were to make the shot and then grab the rim and as the, after the balls went through to protect himself, that's a different story. Okay, but clearly you saw him grab the rim because he knew he had banged into the player and he was trying to protect himself. Well, that the offensive basket interference is what it should have been. You're right. Without question. You're right. He and, knows. And Jason knows it, but he gets to it. It is an all-star game, so the refs are uh, being a little bit loose in, in regard to their interpretation because they know the fans want to see some dunks. But it's a play that uh, you see a little bit too often in terms of guys doing it before the ball actually goes through the basket and clears. And you see Kid pointing to himself saying, I know I made that mistake. You know, when I look at his eyes, he reminds me of Mike Singletary, middle linebacker for the Chicago Bears, always focused and seeing everything in front of him. Nice pass by Roger Rhodes, only an attempt. <laughs> you won't see that too often either. Kid again, and look at how Keen realizing that Kid is going to get him the ball if he'll stay beyond that three-point line. There's Harrington with another Harrington rebound. Is unbelievable on the glass. Well, I'm telling you, that's a strong threesome in there. Harrington making it. Williamson. I mean, they're just knocking people over. Even though that Carlos Strong is in the game and he's a tough kid, so he's got his hands full. 19 rebounds by Othella Harrington. This is Harrington with the ball blocked from behind by Tony Delk, but it took three players. Harrington looking around. for a call, isn't he? I think so. Yeah, he's saying, somebody uh, give me a break here. You know, 
Look at how Delk gets up in the air. Mm. He is going to be a quick defender in that Kentucky scheme, as well as being a great outside shooter. They're strong and Harrington down inside. Really fun to watch these two guys battle each other. Lloyd, not afraid to take it to the hoop. Strong with the follow. And we've got a little collision here on the floor. Everybody's, Everybody's hurt. No, they're all right. A little tired, but all right. Speaking of tired, Billy, these kids have been here all week long. And again, a number of them coming off of the uh, Capital Classic game in Washington, D.C. So indeed, they do have reason to be a little tired. Well, we see Williamson has said he's gained about 10, 12 pounds since the season ended. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, Nolan Richardson saying we're not going to have an Oliver Miller situation. So where Oliver ballooned up to what, 312? 12 pounds. Oh, and he's got his whole career on the line and not showing the kind of dedication necessary to get the kind of money that his talent certainly is worth. No question. Williamson! Thomas Williamson, the Arkansas Player of the Year. Well, that 325 pounds got, uh, or 225 pounds got up off the ground there. Well, he and Michael Lloyd will make some pair at Arkansas as Mark T. Moore showing the Georgia Tech fans what he plans to bring here. Is that a beautiful jump shot form that he's got? Picture perfect. You know, another, uh, you know, talking about that weight, Stanley Roberts, who was a former uh, McDonald's All-American, went to LSU. You wondered if he was ever going to get himself in position to dedicate himself physically. He has now, and look at what he's doing down in Orlando. Can buy a few Whoppers now. Yep. A 14-point West lead with under four to play, and Greg Gumbel is sitting by with the USA Today Player of the Year, Jason Kidd. All right, JB, and uh, Jason Kidd clearly having fun out there. Is this what you expected it to be? Yes, uh, I try to get everybody involved, and that's what I'm doing today. We're supposed to go out there and have fun, but let the crowd entertain the crowd, and that's what we're trying to do today. So many recruits end up going to schools that have been big names in the NCAA tournament. That's not the case with you. You're headed for the University of California. What was the big attraction for Cal over the other schools? Academics. Academics is a big thing these days, and you got to be uh, academically prepared in life to be successful these days, and that's what I want to be in the future. You decided what you're going to major in yet? Oh, I haven't decided yet. Basketball will be one of them, though, won't it? Yes, it will. <laughs> Jason, thanks very much. Okay, thank you. JB? He already has a Ph.D., uh, Greg, in basketball, if you will. As a matter of fact, his high school, St. Joseph Notre Dame High School in Alameda, California, had never won a Division I state title before he got there. This year, they joined Crenshaw High of L.A. as the only back-to-back -back state champions. So Jason Kidd won whale of a player. Strong inside. And Keen with the steal for the West. <laughs> Davis just bowls over Lloyd to get, keep moving. And there's Davis again getting the hands on the ball. I'm very impressed with Lloyd as well. Michael Lloyd here leading the yep. break. He really is some kind of a player. Yes, Up he is. No slasher. Nolan Richardson and the people at Arkansas are going to love him. They're going to be losing Lee Mayberry, but they're going to be picking up an outstanding point guard leader. Michael Roy with the ball again. He's got 17 points on the afternoon. Nice pass and dunk to Carlos Straw. And coming back in for the West All-Stars, Jason Kidd and Othella Harrington. You know, really, talk about popular schools where these McDonald All-Americans like to go. Well, we saw Cal Berkeley, uh, where Jason Kidd's going, not on that list. But North Carolina, which has had the best record over this 16 years of any school in the United States, has had 28. And to put that in perspective, J.B., the Big East, which has a huge tradition, has had great basketball. In that same period of time, the entire Big East has had 36 McDonald's All-Americans. North Carolina, by themselves, had 28. So there's no reason to uh, wonder any further as to why their record is the number one record over that period of time in all of college basketball. You get that caliber of talent, you're supposed to win some games. The other people on that list uh, weren't bad either. The Dukes, the Kentuckys. UCLA's Harrington with another rebound, but not what he wanted to do with that pass. With that rebound, Harrington now is four shy of the McDonald's all-time record for rebounds. That, of course, being 24 by Sam Perkins. So Harrington with two minutes and 15. Oh, nice, trying to do a nice steal by Harrington and restolen by Simpkins. There's a good block out by Zwicker to go ahead and keep uh, Harrington out of the way and a nice tap in. 
The tap in by Zwicker cuts the West lead to eight with 1.55 left in the game. Jason Kidd being defended by Dwayne Simpson. And Kidd showing that he can pull out the clutch shot. That's Billy. five out of six from the floor for Jason Kidd. Gives him uh, ten points, six assists, five rebounds, five steals. As I said, five out of six from the floor. And here's another good play by Keane. Well, make it six out of seven from the floor. And 12 points. The Kidd can do it all. A pretty tough uh, job right now to talk about an MVP here. Jason Kidd and Othello Harrington. Nice drive by Carlos Strong. 115 left in the game. 93-81 left on top. Take a look at Harrington defensively. Well, you see this Ricker can't block him out. He's a little bit too quick coming over the top. And he makes it. His judgment, not good on the pass, but great defensive play. And there you can see who he's following. Sam Perkins. He's four away. Well, Othello Harrington played with a young man by the name of Vandale Thomas, a six foot five inch guard. You know, it's kind of interesting in talking about how things happen. Sam Perkins played in the uh, All American game in 1980 with those 24 rebounds. Uh, it, it, he was the nucleus, obviously, a part of that 1982 national championship team with James Worthy, who had played the year before in Charlotte. But the MVP of that game was a guy named Russell Cross. Mm -hmm. Went on to Purdue. Mm -hmm. Outstanding player, just never worked out thereafter in an NBA, but certainly that particular day, you have to imagine the game he had. If Perkins had 24 rebounds, and Cross was the MVP. Awesome slam dunk by Othella Harrington from Murrah High School in Jackson, Mississippi. Now, I started to say that Vandale Thomas guy from Lawrence County High School, a six foot five inch guard, an underrated player who played against Harrington, and he can play. So Mississippi's got a lot of talent. And we ought to mention, you know, in regard to Harrington, it's not unusual for him to have some pretty good rebounding days. I mean, the guy is the, according to USA Today anyway, is the number two rebounder in the history of high school basketball. Yes, history. <laughs> That's saying something. Now, you know what's interesting, too? I want to find out who was number one. You know, we know it was not somebody famous, or he would have been mentioned. No doubt about it. Harrington in his uh, high school career, 2,303 rebounds. Billy, that's Ugas. At 39 in one game. Oh, wait a minute. That doesn't count. Another rule I'd like to see go into basketball. If you don't call it bank shot, it doesn't count. Dwayne Spencer, and he knows that that wasn't the shot, but he's smiling about it. <laughs> Nobody will know tomorrow in the box store. Off the glass. They're still laughing. Well, you know, he won't be taking many of those under John Thompson. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. Lloyd. Well, you know, Coach Wood made a good point. If you only see one kid, one game of a player in, uh, of this caliber, you're maybe better off not seeing any. And I think probably what is, is important today is we saw some guys, particularly Harrington and Jason Kidd, who without question are destined to be outstanding college players. But, you know, after watching for two days, JB, I think they're, uh, the talent level here, particularly at the position of swing forward, is going to be outstanding in, in regard to its addition to college basketball next year. Mm -hmm. Not the size we saw last year, the impact players of, of 6, 10, and above, but some outstanding swing players. You think of guys like Roderick Rhodes, Wallace, who just got that rebound, didn't get a chance to showcase it today, but they're going to be there. Dante Bright, another one that fits into that particular category. Because he is a good ball player, Dante Bright. And Chris Collins. Trying to throw the lob for the slam dunk on the part of Murray, and it's all over as the West comes out victoriously, 100 to 85, in the 15th annual McDonald's All-American High School Basketball Game, and we'll be back with post-game activities for you after this. They're inside of the arena here at Georgia Tech, the West All-Stars take it 100 to 85, and. Standing by now with Coach Lou Campanelli from Cal Berkeley is Greg Gumbel. Greg? All right, to Jim. Uh, you know, it's only fair we started with Lou. We might as well uh, help end the day with him. We talked about Jason Kidd. Ten points, six assists, five rebounds, five steals. Is that about what you expected? Yeah, he's just an all-around player. He plays both ends of the court. He loves the defense, uh, you know, creates havoc. And then he gets the ball to the open player. He sees the court so well. 
What about when, when a player steps into this kind of competition with the rest of the kids who are at that level, it still shows that, that, that he can handle it well? Well, he's played good competition before. He's been at uh, national camps for a couple of years, Greg, and, and uh, he's always played against older players as he's, uh, you know, come up through the ranks. So he's not afraid to give up the ball, and by him doing so, he makes other players want to give up the ball. Lou Campanelli can't wait for the next season to start. Lou, thanks very much for joining thanks, us Greg. today. Nice to be here. JB? All right, Greg, and there's some other coaches who can't wait to get some players as well. Billy Packer, we're standing here with Roger Rhodes, who's heading to Kentucky, and Mr. Undecided, Osella Harrington. Billy? Roger, the first thing I want to ask you is your appraisal of future teammate Tony Dowd today. He's a great player, outstanding shooter, and um, he's a great person. I'm on the court and off the court, and um, I'm, we should be pretty good with Tony in the next four years at Kentucky. Well, best of luck to both of you down there. I know it's going to be fun for Rick Pitino. And the MVP of this classic here is Othella Harrington, 19 points, 21 rebounds. The only question that all of America wants to know is, where are you going next year? Um, I guess I'm ready to decide now. I'm going, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that's a safe one. All right. So for Billy Packer, I'm James Brown. Final score, 100 to 85. The West All-Stars win it. Coming up, final round coverage of the MCI Heritage Classic. Good day, everyone. This is CBS. They say it's all right. Ba -bom -bom -bom. They say it's all right. Ba -bom -bom -bom. Say it's all right. Have a good time. Cause it's all right. Everybody knows that it's all right. Whoa, it's all right.